coding is dead. I've seen this prediction thrown around more and more lately, but will programmers really go extinct anytime soon? It's in my best interest to shill for the learn to code industry on this channel. However, looking into 2023, there are some really bad looking storm clouds on the horizon. In today's video, we'll look at six messed up trends that might kill programming once and for all, along with a few shreds of hope at the end. Before we get into it, I'd recommend you sign up for Fireship Pro to learn how to code with a brand new platform I built from scratch that provides an addictive, meme-driven experience. And this might be your last chance to support the channel before coding dies forever. The first trend I want to talk about is stalled technology. Now normally I love making fun of Facebook on this channel, but things have gotten so bad with the metaverse that I honestly just feel sad at this point. Like the entire metaverse likely has fewer daily active users than that shitty side project that you totally forgot about. <laughs> like they just keep pouring money into this thing, and so far it's been nothing but an embarrassing flop. I'd highly recommend watching this video from Mental Outlaw to learn more about why it sucks so bad. Now, even though the metaverse sucks right now, that doesn't mean it's not going to be a big thing in the future. There are quite a few technologies out there that haven't fully matured to the point where there's a massive demand for new programmers in the field, but have the potential to be huge in the future, like self-driving cars, 3D printing, quantum computing, and augmented reality. And these technologies are great, but they haven't reached their full potential like the smartphone has. And the big question is will they ever get there? In my opinion, the adoption of these technologies has been pretty disappointing so far. If they never fully mature, that could mean a lot of dead programming jobs. The next trend, which is affecting literally every human being on the planet, is the current economic meltdown. Economists have no idea how this rampant inflation could have possibly happened. It definitely has nothing to do with all that money that was printed the last 10 years. To be fair though, even Nobel Prize winning economists aren't very good at making predictions. Like in 1998, when Paul Krugman thought the internet would have no bigger impact than a fax machine. Now that out-of-control inflation is a reality, central banks are raising interest rates, and that's a big problem for programmers. The vast majority of startups and many publicly traded companies don't make any money. They operate in the red and rely on investors to bankroll their losses until they become profitable or get acquired, or go out of business. Higher interest rates make it much harder for venture capitalists to provide easy money for these startups, and that means startups that do raise money have to be far more careful about how they spend it, and one of the biggest expenses for a startup is hiring programmers. As of today, the job market it still appears to be very strong on a macro level. However, just last week there were layoffs at Microsoft, the stock price of Snap collapsed, which means they'll probably have more layoffs, then you've got Elon talking about firing 75% of Twitter staff, and essentially all of the big tech corporations have started to slow hiring, and that's unlikely to change while their stock prices tank as well. And even the Fed said that unemployment needs to go higher, and you should never fight the Fed. They're the house that controls our casino economy. And speaking of casinos, another problematic trend is the crypto winter. Bitcoin is down 70%, from its high of last year. That's not a great look for an inflation hedge. And there's been a variety of disasters that nobody could have ever possibly seen coming in a million years, like the collapse of Luna, Celsius, and Voyager. About a year ago, Web3, or the decentralized web, was trending into the stratosphere. Teenagers were making millions of dollars trading pictures of monkeys, and it looked like Web3 was going to make everything else obsolete by this time this year. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. And now you don't really hear about Web3 anymore. Whether you like crypto or not, its decline in popularity for the time being is not a great sign for programming in general. These smart contracts require smart programmers, but if smart people aren't using them, then we've got a problem here. In my opinion, I think Web3 is in the trough of disillusionment, but will continue to improve and grow in the future. An even bigger threat to the lives of programmers is mo-code, no-code, and low-code. So mo lo. And we're mo lo so. We're lo mo so, bro. Programming has kind of evolved into a blue-collar profession. It's like being a janitor, but with less exercise. Luckily, as of today, it still pays extremely well. That's why boot camps like Bloom Institute of Technology, formerly Lambda School, can offer a job guarantee of $50,000 a year. That's nearly $5,000 more than you would make at McDonald's working for $22 an hour, although they also offer a free McBus Pass. The reality, though, is that technology is now replacing many of the lines of code that used to be produced by humans typing into a keyboard. There are tons and tons of tools now that make it possible for non-engineers to create basic applications, websites, and even back-end utilities and databases. On top of that, engineers are now writing code with tools like GitHub Copilot, which move us closer and closer to obsolescence. There are no doubt ambitious people out there foaming at the mouth with the idea of entirely automating your job with AI. The technology is not there yet, but just look at how far it's come in the last year. We now have things like stable diffusion and Dolly, and voice cloning that's indistinguishable from the real thing. It's only a matter of time, and when that day comes... It's over. We are screwed. 
Next up, we need to talk about social media consolidation, a trend that's been going on for many years now. Tech Lead made a video about this last week, and you can always trust him to tell you the things that you don't want to hear. And that you think the ability to code is like magic. It's not. We're not wizards. Nowadays, the vast majority of content creation has been absorbed by platforms like TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube that use the follower model for social media. Why is that? Well, it incentivizes creators with money and internet fame at a time when the common person's attention span is lower than ever. Like more than 50% of Americans have not read a book in the last year. This is a problem for developers because people are no longer downloading apps from the app store every day or randomly surfing the internet to find new content. This makes it extremely difficult to build a new web or mobile app and make a ton of money with it unless you have a massive marketing budget behind it. Like when oil first became a thing, there were all kinds of prospectors becoming overnight millionaires, but nowadays you have a small handful of companies that control the entire world. It's a bad trend for independent developers because it's much harder to take your side hustle to the moon. Now the final trend, which has also been going on for years, is the cloud. You have big cloud platforms like AWS that have been aggressively simplifying basically all areas of development, and until recently that's mainly meant fewer jobs for system administrators and IT guys. But now there are many tools coming out that eliminate both front-end and back-end jobs, like Honeycode, which is a no-code tool for building web and mobile apps, or Amplify, an entire back-end as a service. In addition, you've got a bunch of new startups coming out with next-gen serverless databases that further simplify the role of a back-end developer. In other words, as new cloud-based tools make development easier, there's just less code to write. Now this video may sound very pessimistic, but I think there is hope. You could always get into farming. That's what Bill Gates did after he got sick of coding in C-sharp, and now he's the biggest farmland owner in the United States. Another ray of hope for millennials is that Gen Z seems to be pretty tech illiterate, primarily because that generation is growing up at a time when social media and technology is already very consolidated. Like I bet many kids these days don't even know how URLs work or that you can even edit them in the browser. And that's good news for old millennial developers who understand these esoteric technologies. Another piece of good news is that it looks like World War III could start any day now. Instead of being drafted to the front lines, a good programmer will likely be assigned to up updating software on drones and missiles, while a good web developer can update CSS on propaganda websites. Now, if that doesn't pan out, I have a lot of faith in the JavaScript ecosystem to create an endless supply of jobs by creating an endless supply of new game-changing frameworks. If the new frameworks can always stay one step ahead of the no-code tools and the AI, then I think our jobs will be safe. Another point when it comes to no-code and low-code is that this stuff has been around forever. Like, Microsoft Excel is a low-code tool. In my experience, it's always been a dead-end hype train. Even if no-code did hypothetically make all engineers obsolete, you would still need someone to code and maintain all those no-code tools. Ultimately, when I take a step back and look at the big picture, I see this massively complex ecosystem of code and technology that'll be impossible to maintain and push forward without a massive army of skilled programmers. Coding will never be an easy skill, and many real-world systems are so over-engineered that they'll always need highly specialized and highly paid engineers to work on them, and just like our banking system still needs COBOL developers. The reality is that code is just the most efficient efficient way for humans to develop software. There will always be ups and downs in terms of opportunity for coders because of the economy and whatnot. However, it seems highly unlikely that the underlying skill set of writing code can actually be replaced by anything in the near future. All right, that's enough talking. I need to get back to writing some code with GitHub Copilot. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.